The LinkedIn Podcast Network is sponsored by TIAA. TIAA makes you a retirement promise, a promise of a guaranteed retirement paycheck for life. Learn more at TIAA.org backslash promises pay off. LinkedIn presents. As my thinking on innovation has evolved, I've become increasingly interested in how new ideas, however brilliant, sometimes confound the expectations of their creators. When we bring new technology into the world, we need to be thoughtful about not just how it can help us, but how it could be co-opted in potentially negative ways. Hey, everybody, it's Monday. I'm your host, Michael Kovnat, and this is the Next Big Idea Daily. I got to tell you, we're pretty excited here at the Next Big Idea Club, and that's because one of our favorite authors, Stephen Johnson, has just published a new book, one of his signature tapestries that weaves together history, technology, and culture. What? Again, you may ask? Well, yes, again, because Stephen is an extremely prolific author, not to mention the host and co-producer of the Emmy-winning PBS BBC series, How We Got to Now. His new book is called The Infernal Machine, a true story of dynamite, terror, and the rise of the modern detective. And in it, he challenges the idea that our politics now are worse than they've ever been. Stephen takes us back to the first part of the 20th century when politically motivated bombings were common and police were mostly helpless to respond. Here's Stephen to share what we can learn from that tumultuous time. We do not live in unusually polarized times. There's a lot of forgotten history in The Infernal Machine, but maybe the most astonishing fact from the book is that during a roughly 20-year period at the dawn of the 20th century, New York City alone experienced 7,000 bombings, many of them planted by political radicals as acts of terrorism. Just think about what that would be like in today's world of social media and round-the-clock news coverage. The press called the bombs Infernal Machines, hence the title of the book. This bombing campaign was not just a New York phenomenon. The period from the assassination of Tsar Alexander in Russia in 1881 to the Red Scare of 1919-1920 saw a surge in anarchist violence, including bombings, assassinations, and riots that posed a significant threat to public safety and political stability. For example, over a 65-year period beginning in 1881, the number of assassinations of world leaders effectively tripled compared to the previous 65 years, with many of these acts of violence occurring in industrialized European nations and the United States. I think this is all an important corrective to the idea that we live in particularly turbulent or polarized political times, at least in the United States. The polar opposites might be louder now, thanks to the amplifiers of social media and cable news, but they sit on a much smaller globe of political possibility. The period I document in The Infernal Machine was a world where one side of the spectrum thought it was appropriate to execute people who objected to a 72-hour work week in a factory that posed serious threats to your personal safety, while the other side of the spectrum thought that we should abandon both governments and corporations and reinvent society along the lines of Swiss watchmaking collectives. That's what the anarchists believed. Those were the distant poles of the debate. What we would now call the Overton window, the space of potentially valid political beliefs, was far wider than anything in American politics today. Indexing algorithms can transform the world. When historians catalog the momentous inventions of history, the printing press, the telescope, the steam engine, they rarely include indexing algorithms. But tools that help us explore ever larger pools of information and widen the net we can cast in those pools have often turned out to trigger inflection points in history. The invention of the modern footnote and indexing protocols that developed slowly over the 16th and 17th century made a meaningful contribution to the scientific revolution that emerged during that period. The Infernal Machine tells the story of another revolution in information management. For almost all of the 19th century, the idea of an American police officer conducting a forensic investigation, solving a crime rather than simply beating a confession out of a suspect, would have seemed preposterous. Government agencies lacked any systematic identification system. 
A suspected criminal or terrorist could simply make up a name for himself while under arrest, and the authorities would have no centralized database of information to confirm that identity. But the pioneering work of figures like Alphonse Bertillon and Joseph Ferro, some of the heroes of Infernal Machine, transformed crime fighting into an information science, applying systematic methods like fingerprint analysis to track down criminals and build a more comprehensive understanding of criminal networks. Eventually, prodded into existence by a terrifying wave of anarchist bombings in the teens, J. Edgar Hoover and the newly formed FBI harnessed the power of card catalogs and what Hoover called the editorial file system to track down and suppress anarchist activities. In the end, it was the state's superior ability to organize information that allowed it to prevail over the anarchist dream of a stateless society. How Institutions Change We have a default tendency to talk about large organizations, particularly ones that are government agencies, as resistant to change and innovation. But that is not always the case. There are plenty of examples in history of large organizations with entrenched habits reinventing themselves. The story at the heart of the Infernal Machine, how the NYPD radically changed the way it combated crime over the space of about 10 years, is a great case study in how institutions can transform themselves under the right circumstances. At the close of the 19th century, the NYPD was largely characterized by corruption, inefficiency, and a reliance on brute force. But the emergence of anarchist violence, coupled with pioneering innovations in forensic science in Europe, forced the department to adapt. In part, the lesson here is the power of charismatic individuals inside the organization, like Joseph Ferro championing the adoption of fingerprint identification and other forensic methods, gradually shifting the NYPD towards a more scientific and data-driven approach. Or Police Commissioner Arthur Woods, who spearheaded the creation of specialized units like the Bomb and Anarchist Squad, embracing undercover operations and a more strategic approach to containing radical threats. But it's also an example of how massive institutions can be forced to adopt new ideas by individuals or small groups who are operating outside the organization in question. One of the main reasons I wrote The Infernal Machine was to document the extent to which these vast modern systems of surveillance were brought into being by the threat posed by rogue anarchist groups. It's one of those stretches of history where some of the most powerful institutions of the world are shaped by the activities of marginal groups working outside the dominant channels of power. Innovation's Unforeseen Paths I've written extensively about innovation over the years in books like Where Good Ideas Come From and How We Got to Now. But as my thinking on innovation has evolved, I've become increasingly interested in how new ideas, however brilliant, sometimes confound the expectations of their creators. There's an incredible story of technology's unintended consequences in the infernal machine. And that's the story of Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite. Nobel envisioned his creation as a tool for progress, aiding construction and engineering projects. He believed dynamite's destructive power would deter warfare, leading to what he called a golden peace. However, the compact and easily concealed nature of dynamite made it the weapon of choice for a new breed of political radicals and anarchists, giving them the ability to challenge powerful institutions. The unintended consequences of Nobel's invention were profound, sparking a wave of terrorist attacks that swept across Europe and eventually reached America. In the end, Nobel's legacy became intertwined with the violence he had inadvertently unleashed, earning him the moniker, the Merchant of Death. Seeking to reshape his legacy and promote peace, Nobel established the Nobel Prizes, including the prestigious Peace Prize, which recognizes efforts towards disarmament and conflict resolution. The story of dynamite serves as a stark reminder that even the most well-intentioned innovations can have unforeseen and far-reaching consequences. It reminds us that when we bring new technology into the world, we need to be thoughtful about not just how it can help us, but how it could be co-opted in potentially negative ways. History happens when different cultural networks collide. Another key reason that I wrote Infernal Machine is to illustrate an important principle about what drives the major transformations of history. 
What you see very clearly in this narrative is the way history often unfolds at the crossroads of seemingly disparate worlds. The early 1900s in New York City provide a striking example, where European anarchism, Nobel's dynamite, and European forensics all converged, shaping the city's trajectory and the broader course of American history. Anarchism, with its vision of a society free from hierarchies and state control, arrived in America with European immigrants like Emma Goldman and Alexander Berkman. These idealists sought to dismantle both the capitalist system and the power of the state. Their movement coincided with the widespread availability of dynamite, thanks to Alfred Nobel's invention. Europe also provided the tools to combat this new form of terrorism. Forensic science, pioneered in Paris by Alphonse Bertillon, offered a scientific approach to crime fighting. Joseph Ferreau, inspired by these European innovations, championed the adoption of fingerprint identification and other forensic techniques within the NYPD. This convergence of ideologies and technologies in New York City created a clash between the anarchists and the emerging surveillance state, with figures like Ferreau and Berkman at the forefront of this struggle. The outcome of this clash would have profound implications for the future of policing, political dissent, and the balance between individual freedom and state control. Okay, everyone, if you'd like to dive deeper, pick up a copy of The Infernal Machine at your favorite bookstore and download our Next Big Idea app where you can enjoy several of Stephen's books as he summarizes them for you himself. Come back here tomorrow when I'll have Politico and Axios co-founder Jim Vandehei here to share some lessons from his career, lessons he's gathered together in the new book, Just the Good Stuff, No BS Secrets to Success No Matter What Life Throws at You. I'm Michael Kovnat. See you tomorrow. <laughs>